Can daddy cook? Mm -hmm. Hey, America. My girl's calling me. Daddy. And I cook. Now, another t-shirt, y'all. All right, guys. Just want to show you that. Still working on the uh, Daddy Cooks Initiative, better equipment, yada, yada, yada. Can't smell it, Daddy didn't cook it. If you can't smell it, Daddy didn't cook it. <laughs> I think that's cute. Anyway, guys, there it is. Now, <clears throat> so cool, so cool. All right, guys, now, y'all saw the title. We're gonna do pepper steak, okay? Chinese pepper steak. Okay, now, <clears throat> my supporting cast is here I have blade steak, okay? Now, you can use whatever kind of steak you want. You can use uh, roast and cut it. You can use uh, flank. Use whatever kind of steak you want, whatever kind of beef that you want, all right, guys? Now, in my case, when I prep this, which I'll show you, I'm going to trim off some silver skin and trim off some uh, fat, which won't be necessary if you use a steak, I mean use a roast, okay guys? I'm also gonna end up cutting this into thin strips, which is gonna cause me, once I get into the next portion, to cut my bell peppers and my onions into thin strips, because I want it all to be about the same size, just for visual purposes, all right, for aesthetics. If I was using a roast, I could cut them into squares, and like you see the Chinese food restaurants, uh, you can cut your, uh, your bell peppers and your onions into squares as well. All right guys, so anyway, beef, what I'm going to marinate it in is some hoisin sauce, okay? Well, I'm also going to marinate it in some sesame oil, okay? I'm going to marinate it also in a little bit of soy sauce. I'm going to use a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. I'm not going to put any salt because the soy sauce is salty enough, okay? I'm going to grate in with one of these some ginger, maybe about an inch or so. And I'm also going to grate in one or two cloves of garlic. All right, guys. Once I get all that done, I'm going to mix it all up. I'll give you guys a quick look. See, I'm going to put them in Ziploc baggies. And then I'm going to put them in the refrigerator let them marinate for, you can go as low as 20 minutes. But I'm going to let it go for a couple hours because i got to get outside and cut the grass. So I'm going to let it marinate in the refrigerator. So let me show you that piece. And uh, from there, uh, we'll take a pause. All right, American now, my meat's been all chopped up into strips in most cases across the grains that one that uh, uh, really reduces the cooking time because they're small pieces they cook faster and across the grain to make sure that they're tender next thing I'm gonna do for a marinade is I'm gonna grate in my ginger which I already peeled about an inch worth Now, I'm going to add in the rest of the ingredients, hoisin, hoisin sauce, sesame oil, soy sauce. I want my marinade to be tacky. I want it to all be coated after I mix it all together, but I don't want it to be floating, if that makes sense. All right, guys? So, <clears throat> I'm going to use a spoonful of hoisin sauce, maybe a tablespoonful. All right. Good drizzle of sesame seed oil, sesame oil. From there, I'm gonna put in some soy sauce. Good drizzle of soy sauce. So we can coat everything. And some fresh cracked black pepper. Just like that. I'm gonna get my fingers all up in here and mix this all together, guys. Let me finish getting this mixed. If I need to add more, I will, and I'll tell you that. Let me get this all mixed together, and once I'm satisfied with the amount, then we're going to let this marinate for about an hour. Be right back. Hey, America, now, <clears throat> uh, the next step we need to go into is my uh, gravy, all right? The gravy, my thickening agent, or my gravy for the uh, pepper steak. All right, so my supporting cast uh, is, supporting casts are beef broth, okay, maybe a half a cup to a cup, Oyster sauce, all right, maybe a uh, tablespoon to two tablespoons, 
cornstarch, a uh, tablespoon to two. I'll see how that looks like consistency in here. It's two teaspoons of sugar just for a little bit of that. Pinch of salt, uh, kosher salt to enhance flavors, and some fresh cracked black pepper to taste, okay? Along with that, I got one clove of uh, garlic and another nice size chunk of uh, fresh ginger that's been peeled. Okay, guys? So, in this sugar, I'm gonna add about a half cup ish to a cup of beef broth. All right, a good glove, that's not a technical term, of oyster sauce. I say that's maybe a tablespoon, give or take, of oyster sauce. Cornstarch, I'm gonna go with a tablespoon. Heaping. That should be enough, maybe a little more. A tablespoon and a quarter. I don't even know if that's a measurement, but we'll go with that. A good pinch of salt. Nice. Some fresh cracked black pepper. Nice. And now I'm gonna grate in my garlic clove. And along with that, I'm gonna grate in my nice chunk of ginger. Come back here, <laughs> camera shot. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna grab myself a little whisk. I'm gonna whisk this together. All right, guys, now, this is gonna be my thickening agent, which is the, uh, primarily the cornstarch. Once we get to the step when I add this, I need to bring it to a boil. It will be as thick as it's gonna get once it comes to a boil. I'll probably remind you of that piece if I don't forget. All right, guys, but that it right there is gonna be my Gravy. Let me give it a taste. Nice. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna pause, cut the grass while my meat's marinating, and then I'll come back and then we'll get into vegetables and cooking and plating, and I'll be right back. Hey, America, we're back. Next step, I just need to chop up my uh, bell peppers and my onions. Now I'm gonna cut them into slices. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna cut them into slices about the same size as my meat. And once again, if you were to go to a, some uh, Asian restaurants, Chinese restaurants, they might be cut into squares, but that's pretty much the same shape as their meat. All right, guys, you with me on that? Now, one thing I was looking at online uh, that I didn't know was, what's the difference between these different colors of peppers? Okay. Uh, and what I learned was, it's based on the color they are supposed to be when they are mature and still firm. Okay. Uh, a green bell pepper, if you leave it on the vine, it will eventually change color to turn red and turn other colors, but then it might be mushy, soft, not firm at maturity. It's past its mature time. You with me on that one, guys? So the difference in the pepper is how they are bred to be what color they are based on the uh, stiffness of the flesh and the flavor when they are mature. All right, guys, you with me on that one? Okay, um, let me get my prep work done, and I will be right back shortly. We're back, America. Now, before we start this, let me tell you, first and foremost, when you're doing a lot of Asian cooking, especially stir frying or this type of thing, you want to have everything prepared. That's why I did my prep work first. All right, guys, you want to have everything ready. Okay, right now, I have this on high heat and my uh, non-traditional wok is getting very, very hot. Got my meat ready, my vegetables ready, my thickener ready, okay? Now, I'm gonna put in some uh, vegetable oil. You can use any oil of your choice. Okay, and I'm gonna wait for that oil to smoke. I put it, that's about a cup and a half, two cups. 
It doesn't matter if you put in a little extra oil because you can always pour it off. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to get really hot and then I'm gonna start cooking off my meat. I'll be able to tell that coming up here pretty quick. Because the secret is I want to sear my meat, I want to brown my meat, I don't want to boil my meat. So I'm letting my oil get as hot as I want it to be. Once I throw it in, I'll explain the process. We're gonna take a pause real quick fast. I'll be back when my oil's ready. All right, America, we're back. It's been literally uh, a couple of minutes. I can tell my oil, that I believe, I can say I can tell, I believe my oil is hot enough. I got my hand at the level of the rim and I can feel the heat in the palm of my hand, all right? It's pretty good heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in one piece of meat and see if I get the sizzle that I'm looking for. This is my marinated meat. All right, guys, ready for this? That's perfect. Now I'm gonna start cooking this off in batches, guys. Because if I put it all in, I'll lower the temperature of my meat. I'm bring the meat out flat. And I'm gonna move it out to the outside of the wok before I add more. Because I want my meat brown, I want to brown my meat, I don't want to boil it. Y'all smell that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, indeed. I think I'm going to go one and a half full. See, America, how the temperature of my oil dropped because the meat's cold. This smells good. I know it does, right? <laughs> one more handful. I don't want to overcrowd my pan. And I'm going to continue cooking this and browning it all. I'll be back periodically in the process. So uh, let me get this working. I'll be right back. Hey, America, we're back. Now, this happens to everybody. I assume it happens to me. Take a look at my pot. All right, now, I tried to stir fry my beef. And I got it done. There it is. Okay. But the, the liquid from the beef, the juice from the beef gets into your oil and it gets bubbly. I know it's happened to you guys if you're a cook. You got two options. You can either... Pour it out and add more oil and start your next batch, which I think is wasteful, or you can do what I'm doing. This has been going like this on high heat for about two, three minutes. I'm just letting the additional liquid evaporate. Once the water evaporates out of my oil, it'll be ready for me to do my next batch. All right, guys, take a look at it one more time. I'm just letting the water evaporate and uh, I'll let you take a quick look see at it before I throw in my next batch. All right, guys? So all right, America, take a look. We're ready for my next batch. You see how it's no longer all bubbly and frothy? I mean, it's hot. All right? I just let the additional liquid, the additional juice evaporate, and now I'll go into my next batch. I'm still on high heat. So for those of you that have fallen into, have fallen into that problem, there's your solution. I repeat the process. Letting my meat out. I'm still on high heat. There's my meat out. Throwing a little bit more. Once again, the meat is cold, so it's going to lower my temperature. And that has something to do with why you get bubbly oil. All right, guys, but you want to keep the heat as high as you can because you want to cook and brown your meat. And you don't want to boil your meat. So I'll be right back. I'm ready to use my last batch. Take a look at that. All right, last batch, which is four batches. Now, two things I want you to know is one, my meat is brown, and two, my oil, the color of the oil. And I'm gonna use this uh, metal spider, my non-stick, gotta be careful so I don't scratch up my pan. All right, right now people be like, hey, hey, don't be using that. Hey, that's all I got. So that's what we use. Just gotta be careful. My oil is very hot, y'all. Now, what I'm going to do is use the same oil to cook my vegetables. I'm going to cook my vegetables for about two minutes. Because it's going to be very fast. Two minutes. Go. 
I got this as high as I can on my stove, y'all. And the reason I'm showing you this is because some of you guys are going to have the same problem. Because I don't have a, a, a Asian or, or a, a Chinese restaurant type stove with a wok. And I don't have gas. Those, those of you that have a gas stove, you might not have these difficulties. I got this electric stove as high as I can get it and I'm trying to stir fry. So that has its own issues in itself. I'm doing these for two minutes because of uh, I want them to be done but crispy. And like I always say, they're vegetables, y'all. You can eat bell peppers raw. You can eat onions raw. I'm not worried about undercooking them. I'm worried about overcooking them. Camera shot. Anyway, two camera shot. Let me continue working on this, guys, for another minute and a half. And then I'll show you the next all right, step. Alright, America, next step. I already pulled all my vegetables out and I poured off all of the extra oil that was in this pan. I'm still on high heat. Now, my uh, gravy mixture, I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to let it come to a boil. Once it gets to, comes to a boil, it's going to be as thick as it's, as it's going to get. Once I let that thicken and I verify that's as thick as I want it to be, I'm just going to recombine everything and we will be done. All right, guys? Y'all saw that? Anyway, let me get this come to a boil. Uh, I'll give you a look-see, throw it all back together, and next thing you see, after that, we'll be plated. Be right back. All right, America, look at this. See how thick that is? That's as thick as my sauce is going to be. You see that, baby? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're just going to recombine and warm everything through. Meat. Just like that. Vegetables. That. I'm going to combine everything, give it a taste, give it a flavor. I might throw in some uh, more oyster sauce or soy sauce after I mix this all through. And we will be done. So let me get this combination done, this warm through done, and uh, my flavor. And we'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're done. I've tasted it. I know what it tastes like. It's fantastic. But take a look at my pot. Take a look at this, America. Ooh -wee. Look at that. Well, how's that, baby? Glorious. <laughs> this is glorious. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Now we get ready to uh, swap places. My baby girl Octavia, my camera woman, gonna do a taste test for y'all, and I'm gonna leave camera. <laughs> Fail. Fail. <laughs> Got to be more careful. All righty, baby. Take a look at that plate. Mm -hmm. It is, ain't it? Oh, you're gonna get a piece of everything? Yeah. Bell pepper, <laughs> meat? You gonna try scooping a little rice on that too? Try it if I can get it. All right. Let's scoop it on with the knife. There you go, nice. All right, that's all right. <laughs> Here we go, America. Oh, I can hear that from here. It's <laughs> still crunchy. That's good. Oh, really good. What's good about it, babe? Everything, of course, but um, the meat is rich in flavor. Nice. And the um, peppers. It has its own taste to it. It's still crunchy, but then it's like coated in the uh, sauce. Okay, okay. It's, it's really, really good. Really rich. Nice. I said that, but it's rich. Mm -hmm. um, Yep, mine too. Rich mine. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Can daddy cook? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a cheap plug. Anyway, y'all, that's the way you do it. It's not that hard. Uh, once, I, once again, about the difficulty, if you don't have a very, very hot stove and you're cooking at home like most of us are, guys, you got to overcome some of the things that they don't have to worry about in restaurants. We can't quite get that professional heat. So if your oil starts bubbling up like it does, like mine did, all you gotta do is pause. Take your meat out, let your oil come back to temperature, evaporate all that liquid, and you get right back to browning your meat. All right, guys, um, find yourself a recipe, do the math, figure it out, cook yourself something good to eat. My girls call me. Daddy. And I cook. Peace.
Daddy Cook. Mm. 